Stay tuned for the biggest fish, the hottest bites, this week here on In-Depth Outdoors. Got it. Look at that. Wow, is that an incredible fish? Got him. All right. Oh, yeah. Quality Green Bay fish here. Green Bay fish here. We are headed to the best fisheries across the upper Midwest and Canada. We'll fish longer, explore unfished bodies of water, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites in fresh water. Oh, look at that. <laughs> what a specimen. Specimen. Here he comes, man. Get him. <laughs> this is In-Depth Outdoors. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another season of In-Depth Outdoors here on Fox Sports North. This is our eighth season here on Fox Sports North. And just like every other year, uh, we're always responding to what our viewers want to see. So this season, we're tweaking our broadcast just a little bit like we have in years past. Instead of starting our broadcast season with three or four ice fishing episodes filmed last winter, what we're going to do is we're going to keep everything current. All shows are going to be filmed in that same time period right before they air. That keeps them current and a lot more useful. And of course, we don't like to produce shows that are a year old and we don't think you want to watch them. So everything this year is going to be current. And what that means for our ice fishing broadcast is really pretty simple. We're not going to start with uh, year old ice fishing episodes and that will allow us to run deeper into the ice fishing season and keep us on the ice a little bit longer. That should keep our ice fishing audience a lot happier. So that's where we're going to start our broadcast season. There's no safe walkable ice anywhere to be found. Uh, as you can see over my right shoulder here, uh, one of the boat harbors uh, here in the metro right near Minneapolis St. Paul is actually iced over while the rest of the lake is wide open. So we really are kind of right on that tipping point between open water and ice fishing. There's a very high likelihood that by next week, next week's episode, we'll actually be on ice somewhere. We've got real cold conditions settling into the Midwest and it might be just enough to get us out on the ice. So on today's show, we're fishing with Paul Delaney in Door County. We're gonna be out on Washington Island. What's really cool about this location is it's one of the few places in the world that you can go fishing by putting your boat on a boat at the start of your day. So we're gonna be putting the 2025 MX from Skeeter Boats on top of the ferry, run it out to Washington Island in pursuit of some gigantic smallmouth bass. And that's what brings me back to this location every fall. The shot, the legitimate shot at a six pound smallmouth. You add in the opportunity to fish with Paul Delaney, who's just a super guy, just ultra clear water conditions and huge bass everywhere you turn. It's gonna make for a great show. So that's what you can expect on today's show. Great smallmouth action, a beautiful location at a great time of year. This bite should last all the way through ice up or until it's just too darn cold for anglers to get out on this particular bite. So that's where we start our broadcast season here on In-Depth Outdoors, out on Washington Island, chasing giant smallmouth with Paul Delaney. Got him? Oh, all you right. You better believe it. But I don't think he's gonna be a, a giant. You know me, my first fish is usually a white fish oh, yeah. or steelhead or... <laughs> There's one. Oh, I missed one. Um, did he hit it hard? No, he did not. Yeah, this one just hit mine on the... There he is. I got to get... Oh, he caught. Oh. We'll call this a nice starter fish. No. Yep. That fish is going to give you two, three chances at him, isn't he? When I cast it out there, that bait was settling to the bottom, and it didn't even quite make it to the bottom, and whack. Number seven rip and rip. You know, of, of all the lures that a guy kind of comes across and starts to add to his arsenal, this is one that for me, after you kind of introduced me to it this uh, spring for walleyes, those giants down there in Sturgeon Bay, I've been using it everywhere. Yeah. Catching fish. Yeah, you know, we fished, there, fished them this spring and uh, through the summer and the fall and the spring. I, I just love using the bait. Obviously, I'll fish a little bit differently than we do, um, you know, in the cold water and the warm water, but it's a great, great bait. I love it. Well, I try a lot of new baits each year and not all of them work as well as this one. Has. This, is a, this has been a fun one. Oh, there's a bunch down there, James. They're actually stacked right here. Got oh, off. There, there he is. is. He was right, right above it. Right when you lifted it up, he hit it. See, <laughs> he was so there. so much fun. Yeah. He gave me a warning shot. That's exactly what I'm saying. You know, I, I think a lot of times they follow it and they sit there and they wait for it to move again. That fish just cracked it the first time. Kind of woke me up and let me know it was coming. This is going to be a nice fish. Good. I mean, he, he hit it with a lot of authority. Look at that. That's nice what we fish. come here for. Drive all night long, get into the hotel at 4.30 in the morning, 
That fish thought that was going to be all kinds of goodness. It was wrong. There we go, sweetheart. Ah, oh, it's a nice fish. Pretty one, isn't he? I'm a big fan. Big fan. Yeah, very big fan, Paul. Yeah. Boy, that is a very, very nice smallmouth. Pretty fish. I'd rather be doing this than home raking leaves or something. Oh, no no Which leave rig. Probably what I'd be doing if I was actually <laughs> home right now. Good fish. Exactly like we were saying there, how he missed you. And just have patience, let it sit on the bottom. That fish was going nowhere. Beautiful specimen. Probably in that, uh, you know, 18 inch range. Paul gets these things, what do you say, 26, 27 inches? Or no, wait, that was the wall. That's right, yeah. We want to start talking 26, 27. Now you got me excited. <laughs> Bye, sweetheart. Nothing hurt but her pride. That's it. I That's hope I it. catch a few more that hit like that. That was pretty nice. It's just a real blast to feel that fish pin that bait to the bottom and whack. You know, especially, you know, using this 832 suffix line, it's just very sensitive. So on those long, long casts, which we need sometimes in this clear water, you know, if you're using monofilament in a situation like this, you may not feel those bites way out there. Obviously, the shorter your line is, you're going to have a little bit more sensitivity there. But with this no stretch line, I, there's one. Look at that right there. <laughs> now, that one wasn't. I didn't feel that fish bite it, but I just kind of came up on him and he was there. It's a nice fish. And all my fish here, James, have battle marks on them. This guy's got a little scar on his back there, too. Let's get this guy in the boat there. There we go. There we go. Real similar to that one you just got, James. I think he's a little bit bigger, don't you? Pretty. Just a great fish. And look how he took that bait there. That's just a dark one. He is. Yeah. How about I hand you a pliers? Yeah. Thank you. All right. There, there we go. Yeah. And once again, that's the that's the number six rip and wrap. Uh, James has still got the seven. I've got the six on here. Uh, I think we're batting probably equal as amount of bites. So we'll just see how the day goes here. And if the preference goes to one size or the other, obviously we're prepared to switch there. But real pretty fish, nice fish. Let's get this guy back in there. Thanks for playing, guy. Get you back in there. Woo. Now we're having fun. Hello, I'm Dave Markworth. I'd like to introduce you to the Skeeter Boat Center in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. At the Skeeter Boat Center, we carry the Midwest's largest selection of Skeeter fishing boats, all at prices you can afford. And we offer test drives on most models in stock. Our highly trained staff will provide you the personalized service that you deserve. So check us out at SkeeterBoatCenter.com, where our goal is to help you have fun fishing. The last time I was out here with Paul, last fall, basically fishing a very similar bite to what we're fishing right now, we kind of got cheated. Uh, Hurricane Sandy had come ashore and uh, the winds that got pushed up here into the Great Lakes were so crazy it blew us off the water. We, one minute we were catching fish and the next minute we were basically just running for the harbor. Uh, and as we drove home we were listening to weather reports of waves out in the middle of Lake Michigan, 20, 25 feet in height. So it was uh, quite the uh, phenomenon. It's not very often that you get to go fishing in the Midwest and have a uh, hurricane throw you off your game a little bit. <laughs> so we're back for round two, revenge. These are much more pleasant conditions to be fishing in. I'll take it. We'll get to fish all day and maybe then some. Ooh, there you Ooh. go. That fish just hoovered it. I like that sound. Way out there too. Way he's, out he's there. gonna jump on you. He's too big you to know, jump. When, there oh, you he did! I was just gonna say, yeah, they're not really jumping all that much. Too you know, cold. They kind of reminded me of like me doing like the 100 meter hurdles, you know? <laughs> really kind of ugly. But he actually did it. He cleared he the surface. He did. He got out. This is a nice fish. He's cold. I don't know that that, that, cold. that bait actually made it all the way to the bottom. I was kind of just kind of twitching it, pumping it as it was falling, and nice. I think he came up to greet it. That's where it's fun. Good girl. Good girl. <laughs> That's a nice fish. It is. I'm going to take the net. The scoop, please. You got it. Give me the little rubber butterfly net here. If somebody showed up with this net in my boat when we were fishing walleyes or something like that, I'd 
I'd probably have a fit, but this is the perfect net. It it's is. the only time of the year that I use this net is when I come fishing with you up here with these smallmouth. It's, it's, it's absolutely. I use a bigger, you know, softer net uh, throughout the summer months. Want to hand me the pliers, Paul? You got it. But when you're throwing these crankbaits with all these real sharp treble hooks on it, that's your best friend to have that rubber net there. What a beautiful, beautiful, fat fish. And when I say fat, I mean that in all the best possible ways. Get the bait out of there. That's my biggest fish of the day so far, Paul. Oh, he's chunky, yeah. That's a nice fish. Pretty fish, really is. I give her an so A healthy. for effort and, and all that because that fish hit before that bait ever got near to the bottom. Just Beautiful. a great Smile. fish. All right, sweetheart. Whoosh. I was gonna, you know, give her that nice loving stroke in the there water. Look at that. Heck look no. at that. There we go. You know, I'm just criticizing you a little bit there, James, because you're getting all the big, solid bites, and I'm just kind of coming up on the fish. Now this one, he whacked it and he whacked it hard. He gave you the good stuff. And if I'm not mistaken, I'm going to guess the fish to be a decent size fish here. 19 and a quarter inches, is that your guess? Oh, nice one there, you ah, bet. That's awesome. And if you notice, I don't see my bait anywhere. There's a little bit of it hanging out of his lip there. <laughs> Solid fish. I mean, it's yeah, not, not the bad. absolute horse giant, but better than a sharp stick in the eye. Hey, he wanted that bait, huh? All right, there we go. Nice fish. That might be our heaviest one yet here, That James. is the biggest fish we've had in the boat today, yeah. Paul. Boy, look at how he ate that rip and wrap, huh? Just T-boned, right straight. He's got a mouth full of rapala there. All right, let's see if I can get my hand in there without getting hooks in there. Wow, what a great fish. And like I was saying, James, I was not getting a lot of those fish to bang that bait like they have been. But this one, by all means, picked that bait up off the bottom and there was no question that I just had a super nice bite. What a great fish. And once again, my, you know, the health of these fish, you look at the stomach there, just look at the girth on those fish. That's really what puts their weight on them. I'm gonna guess this fish at being a good solid 18 inches. Uh, I don't know what it weighs, but just a really quality fish. He's all there, girth and length. And you know, that's, that's what Door County smallmouth fishing is all about here in the fall time. Big fish really putting the chew bag on. Winter's coming, they know they've got to eat now. It's gonna be a long, cold winter down there. So just a great, great time to be up here fishing smallmouth. I'll admit it, I'm a little jealous. He's a good one, huh, Jay? Best fish we've seen today, man. All right, well, thanks for playing, girl. We'll get you back there. God, is that awesome. Right. At Skeeter Boats, our passion for turning great ideas into even better fishing boats has produced an unmatched lineup of models intended to fit the way you fish. Like the WX series, designed to handle big water in tough conditions, including the new MX1825, built from the ground up to be the ultimate 18-foot fishing boat, and Skeeter Bass Boats, setting the standard for speed and fishability. Skeeter, engineered like no other. There we go. Feels like a better one, James. Awesome. Hey, you know, we're just we're just here in between a little spot here. We've got some rocks along the shoreline, got a rock pile out here. What I'm doing is I'm trying to keep the boat in this little trough here. It consists of all sand right in here. And a lot of times, especially when the sun's shining, these fish will like to come up into the sand. I believe that sand absorbs some of that sunshine, some of that heat. But anyways, that's what we're doing here. We're just trying to keep the boat right here in about 20 feet of water just in between this little saddle here of sand, just in between the shoreline break and a, and a rock pile out here. And uh, well, here's what's, here's what's sitting here. Pretty nice fish. We'll bring him aboard that way. And you can kind of see on the color of this fish, you may have noticed some of the fish we had earlier and I, I may have mentioned it. Um, you distinctly can tell these fish that are coming, just get this hook out of there. There we go. The fish that are coming off the sand have this much lighter, lighter color to them as opposed to those fish that are sitting on the rocks that, that have the darker algae stuck on them and stuff. So nice fish there, probably 17, maybe 18 inches. Okay, let's get you back in the water here. Another dandy caught on that rap of the rip and wrap. Let's get you back in there. 
Oh, right. I love it here this time of year, Paul. It's just beautiful. Fall's a magical time. We're not dealing with the summer heat. Fish know that winter's coming. They're really putting that feed bag on. And there's one. There oh. we go. Nice one. Now, that one was just like I was saying earlier. Sometimes I let, the, let them sit, let it pause on the bottom there, and those fish will come up and pin it to the bottom. Not a jump. big fish, oh. but very aggressive on how we hit that bait on the bottom there. Look at oh, that. Oh, <laughs> that's the quick and easy release. <laughs> no. Some might actually accuse you of doing that on purpose. Keep your hands dry. Not afraid of wet hands. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, here comes the wind. It's starting now. See, we were in between the two winds. We came out at the... Got it. Oh, right. Yep. All right, let's see what this place is well, all about. That's a better fish, James. Yes, it that's is. a better fish. Just popping, power hopping it, you know? And you notice I haven't seen that fish, and I'm saying better fish. It's those head shakes that yeah. we talked about earlier. And then he just goes into D8 dozer mode here. Nice. <laughs> just dig. That's, that's the way. Well, woo, mad fish. You know, you can be out here dragging suckers, and there, there are times during the day that we've actually had a, you know, a sucker right out the back of the boat, and you're thinking, eh, you know, maybe live bait's the way to go. It's just not. We catch so many more fish on these baits. Oh, and it's so much more fun. Nice. And you cover a lot more ground. Looks like a dandy. This is going to be a tanker. Is it going to be my six-pounder? I don't think so. Nice fish. Yeah, good fish. Just lip hooked. That's a nice one. Look at that. Hello, sweetheart. Just a beautiful, beautiful fish. Went in, grabbed that rip and wrap. Got one hook right there in the lip. That's all it takes. Just a great, great fish. Come on, sweetheart. Out you go. That fish is going to release in great shape. Just a beautiful smallmouth. Can't get enough of them. I, I love where you live, man. You know, one thing we should point out, whether you're fishing a blade bait, jig and spoon, or these rip and wraps like we're fishing here, uh, the reason that type of bait is effective is because you're really imitating a fling bait fish. And just kind of use your imagination here for a second. Imagine a, a small mouth or a wally or any other predatory fish catches a glimpse of something near a rock or on the bottom. It comes over to investigate, and all of a sudden that minnow just comes shooting out startled. It's going to run it down, grab it, eat it. And that's really what these kind of like reaction baits, you know, like I said, blade bait, jigging spoon, or this rip and wrap, they're all doing the same thing. It's getting that fish to come and investigate, and then on that next pop, it goes shooting away, and then just natural predatory instinct takes over. They grab that bait. So it's really important, you know, when you see us fishing this type of bait, that you pay close attention to how they're being worked. We're jigging them, but it's not your typical live bait pinned on a jig type presentation. We're allowing that bait to find bottom and we're giving it a real sharp snap. We really want that bait to explode up off the bottom. When that fish comes in to investigate, we want that just maximum startled bait fish look to what these rip and wraps are doing. So when you come out and give this a try, make sure that you know, you're giving that bait, that rod tip, a real good hard lift to get that bait to just jump up off the bottom. If you do that, you're going to be successful. Markham Technologies introduces ice fishing to the digital age with the LX Digital Sonar System. Boasting vivid color LCD displays and features not found on other ice electronics, all digital units offer a user-defined display tailored to match the way you fish. An on-screen dashboard that puts critical information at your fingertips and free firmware updates that guarantee your electronics are never outdated. This winter, step into the digital age with an LX Series Digital Sonar Unit from Markham Technologies. There, there we go. Yep. Nice one? Yes, indeed. All right. Boom. Good hit. I just love that, man. This is good stuff. You know, for all those guys at home that consider themselves a bass fisherman or anybody that just likes to catch these fish, if you've already hung it up for the year, this is just sitting here. I mean, it goes until too cold. You know, whatever is considered humanly too cold for you, that's when this bite kind of stops. The fish don't stop. It's just nobody comes out here anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of guys, they get into September, early October, so the bass fishermen, and they just give it up. And this stuff is big fun. Yeah, a lot of times, this is sometimes when you see some of your biggest fish. It's just 
the average size. I mean, what a perfect little hook set right in the corner of the mouth. You know, I, I don't mind fishing live bait, but this is actually out fishing live bait. I mean, if we just turn the camera right here, we have a sucker rod right out the corner of the boat. It doesn't do anything. It's got a nice lively sucker down there swimming along. You think, well, you know, that should take as many or more fish. It doesn't. Um, we've had a couple uh, takes, we'll call them, on that rod. They'll drop the sucker before we get there. And we just keep catching fish Looks on like these dandies. That fish just about got me. Come here, sweetheart. Oh, they're so strong. Beautiful. Door County, fishing with Paul Delaney. The name of his guide service is Late Eyes. Apparently he knows a few things about smallmouth bass as well. <laughs> Good fish. You know, James had mentioned that we have another rod out here with a circle hook and a live bait rig with a sucker minnow on there. And we're doing that just to see what the fish's mood is. Just trying to get, maximize the amount of our bites that we can. Um, and the thing is with that, a lot of times when they will eat those sucker, they'll eat them real light, real light bites. And that's just the complete opposite as what happens with these ripping wraps. When they eat this, it's a reactionary bite. It's a thump. There's no question about that you've got a bite. Whereas if they're gonna take that live bait light sometimes, you can miss a lot of your bites. Very rarely do we miss a fish that wants to aggressively eat these baits. And if we do miss a fish, first thing we do is drop it right back to the bottom. A lot of times that fish comes right back and picks that bait up again. Oh, oh, is right way out there on the end of the cast. Nice one. Oh yeah, this is good fish, Paul. Oh yeah, he's heavy. Me. I'll go back or go on this one. Absolutely. You know, I want well, to thank you for sharing down. this with me today. It's my pleasure, always. You know that. I enjoy spending time in the boat with you every time. Well, you know your uh, your guide service name is Late Eyes Guide Service, but apparently uh, you should consider a name change. Uh, Something no, with a smallmouth uh, bass uh, in there, you know. It's yeah, well, it's fine. Uh, you know how I love the walleyes too. <laughs> That's a good fish. It's got no, we've had oh, many nice fish yep. today, but this one looks like a decent one. I see a big old shadow donor. Come on, sweetheart. Oh yeah, pretty fish. Look at that. Rip oh. and wrap right there in the snoot. And you secret said we change colors on I here. did. We had a little sun come out, so I figured we better go back to gold. All right. See, that fish has been caught before. That's uh, catch and release uh, work in there. That's an old injury from a, a hook, maybe, you know, early in the spring. Strong as an ox. Pop that hook out of there. There we go. Nice. That's what we're talking about right there. It's been a wonderful day on the water here with Paul Delaney, Late Eyes Guide Service. Like I mentioned, the guy should probably consider a name change, something with smallmouth in there. Just a tremendous fishery. And you know, for any smallmouth angler, or just any angler in general that wants to get out on the water late in the season like this and get in some so just trophy smallmouth bass, this is the destination. Paul Delaney's your guy. I'm gonna let that one go. Pretty fish. And I think we're gonna call it a day. Nice. Fantastic. For more info on the latest fish reports, gear recommendations, and hottest techniques, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on Facebook at Indepth Outdoors. And if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to let our sponsors know.